Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Ishin Tyro 79 Pro. You might just call it V2 or the 2022 edition as well. Come with Ishin branded Tyro 79 Pro branded I guess as well. 2800 kV motors that are 1607s. The only one flight controller is a 35 amp ESC flight controller and it does take batteries up to 4S. The prop looked like the Gemfan 3040 tribladed props. Camera is the Runcam Nano 2. That board right there is the VTX, and that is the XF5805. Uh, that is power switchable, and I do have it wired up for smart audio, but out of the box, it does not come that way. But it is power switchable from 25 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts to 400 milliwatts. But, not actually. It only goes up to 200 milliwatts. Kind of a misprint on the Banggood page. You can see one of my receiver wires right there. It came off. I had a bad crash today. You might be able to tell I had the bad crash this way. Or you can see that crack in the camera. It weighs just about 164 grams. And the flight you're going to see in this video, I flew it on the GNB 720 milliamp 4S battery, which brings the weight to 232 and a quarter grams. Note, I did lose one of these foot pads, so the weight could be another gram or two heavier than what I've shown you on the scale if I were to have that foot pad. But uh, they're not really necessary, and they don't really do all that much. We'll talk more about that later. Carbon fiber for the base plate is three millimeters thick. Uh, those side plates look to be about a millimeter thick, not that they matter. The metal tubes they use look to be three and a half millimeters thick. And motor post to motor post, I'm getting almost 143 millimeters. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of a false start because my throttle isn't at zero as I try to arm, but we'll get started. And you can obviously tell this isn't my normal takeoff position and I did have the camera over in that position. So if the flight audio sounds odd or off, it's because the camera isn't in its typical position because yet again, it was another triple digit day and my audio camera kept shutting down. Like I would get into a flight uh, somewhere around halfway or something before it ended, before I took the goggles off and the camera had basically just shut down. So then I'd go back inside, let it cool off, I'd get a different camera, use my regular work ca uh, cell phone, not camera, and then uh, use that camera to record. Uh, a couple of things, I mentioned that the quick specs, I have smart audio set up out of the box, the kit, and it is a kit, you do have to assemble it and there are some pains in there, so stick around for those pains after the flight. It doesn't come with the wire that would be needed, so I soldered one to the bottom of the uh, XF5805 or 5808, uh, the VTX, and I got smart audio working, and that VTX is fairly old, and I'm not certain I have it working properly. I can make it work. I can change bands and channels and frequencies using the sticks on the radio, but if I try to change it a second time, it won't set the change but if I power cycle it then it will set the change and then I can make one more manual change also I'll put my CLI dump for the uh, tune that you that I'm flying here uh, in the video description as well as the link to the product so if you're interested in looking at the kit see what it costs and you want to get the CLI that I'm flying so be it I think there's just something I touched off with my tune though and keep in mind I'm running Express LRS so I've got everything set up for that so if you're running a different uh, receiver, you'll have some changes you'll need to make in the smart audio that I only already went into. Uh, the KV on this is kind of low, but I suspect that's again one of those issues where they go with a lower KV to try to maintain flight time. Uh, I would have preferred to run my old GNB 550 milliamp batteries, but uh, I just wasn't getting flight time much over two minutes. So I knew that's not what too many people were looking for, so I bumped up. On a 650, like the GNBs that are kind of orange and flower labeled, uh, you get around two minutes and 48 seconds, so getting closer to that three minute mark. And with the 720s from GNB, you can also, well, you're gonna see I get a little bit over three minutes in this particular flight. Unfortunately, this is about where I started feeling more and more comfortable with the quad. Uh, I tend to fly these things a lot before I post my reviews. This isn't as much as I would like to, but I've got some damage, so I think I need to bring that to the table. I certainly don't wanna repair the damage and then do, do the review later on. I think it's important to kind of stop here and note the damage and uh, note my process and experience so far. So typically, these Tyro series, they come in the market at a price point. Uh, the price point that you may find on the Banggood website, which I do have a coupon code down in the video description, is $129.99. Uh, not bad, considering we're seeing a lot of things come in around $150, bucks, but you know, not as cheap as things used to be. Okay, I've uh, bounced off the ground, flipped over on my hood here, and the battery is slowly creeping back up above 3.5 volts per cell, or actually right to 3.5 volts per cell. It'll inch up there, come on. 
Three foot. It's oh, see right. Uh, uh, oh, 350. There it is. And a flight time of 308. I think it said 305 earlier. So 308 on this particular flight. Okay, here's an evening time flight. This was actually just today after work. I had my eight to nine batteries and I was just going to go for a fly. I actually was at work a little bit later than I typically am. Uh, slammed down a short dinner and come out back. Everybody else is kind of doing their own thing. We're on a break. But uh, I had a terrible crash, unfortunately, coming up here. That crash didn't look terrible, but it did cause some damage. I think I caught it just right as far as the top. And we'll discuss that a little bit. But let's move forward in my DVR. So now you can see how out of focus my camera is and I'm trying to uh, refocus it because actually I've got six or so more batteries and I was going to fly those. But uh, the only our focal point is way close and I already showed you the quick specs but we'll take another look at it. There is a crack in the camera housing mainly because the front end of the body is kind of depending upon the camera to hold it together which eh, it's kind of a bad idea. So I've got some suggestions if you happen to get one. And for those of you that noticed, I didn't cover the accessories. Here they are. Extra set of props, which I did end up using some of them. Uh, we got an extra wiring harness. Looks like that would be uh, potentially for a receiver. And we these are antenna tubes. Don't mistake those for metal standoffs. And then we have these weird foam pieces that you could use to put on this battery. This actually, I think, is designed to put on the bottom of the battery uh, tray here. So it protects your battery when you come on the landing. I didn't use that. It's just going to add weight. I guess if you're coming in flat and you're landing kind of hard, might be useful for some people. Uh, then we've got extra screws that do come in the kit. Of course, this is an assembly kit. We'll talk about that. Uh, not in great detail, but enough detail where you get the picture. Uh, it came with this battery strap, which was too long, so I ended up using one of my own. This one happens to be from RDQ. I also used a Flywoo super sticky battery mat. It's not so sticky now because it's gotten dirty, but I can clean that off and it would revive itself because the mat that they include is real thin so your battery is actually going to be squeezed against the screws on the body of the frame here so i opted to use my own just so i didn't damage my battery they do include one but it's thin i suggest uh, getting your own and using that if you want to it did come with the famous fabric tape or harness tape whatever emacs tape uh, so you can get those wires down and speaking of those wires this is just like the original kit, or my recollection of the original kit, or one of the original kits. It comes as a kit, you have to build it, and they use cheap components. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It is uh, Components are selected at a price point. So, soldering these wires, as you can see my solder, like look at this one. There's barely any solder on there, if you can see that. They're just such a pain, because the... The motor wires are typically enameled inside the bell. And then you have a, another wire that is attached to that wire that then leads out of the motor. And it's a nice silicone based wire. These are very stiff. They're plastic coated. So they're very difficult or much more difficult to work with than silicone based. Then you have the enamel on top of the actual wires that you need to solder that you really can't solder through and you can't just heat it up with your soldering iron and burn it off. What I ended up doing was uh, kind of trying to remember several years back, I took a pair a pick of, uh, excuse me, I took a pair of fingernail clippers and we just used the edge of that clipper to just scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub on these wires and I'd twist them together and I'd scrub and scrub and scrub and I'd twist them and scrub and scrub and scrub. I'm just trying to scrape off that enamel that's on each individual of these wires so I can get enough of it on there. Some are better than others, but this one right here in the end is kind of typical of what tends to happen in these situations where you just you only get a couple of threads of the motor wire that is actually taking some solder and is holding that down so yeah these motor wires are frustrating to deal with they're hard plastic coated and they have enamel on the actual copper wire all the way to the end so that is a bit of a frustration uh, i mentioned it already but one of the uh, my leads came off in that last crash for my receiver that's down in here. They've got this little retriever, uh, excuse me, the receiver tray here. It's fine, I guess. It, if I were to build it again, I wouldn't use that. I'd just take some double-sided foam tape, stick it to the bottom of my receiver, and stick it on top of the VTX, or mount it upside down, or depending upon what receiver you have, and if you want long range or not. You know, I don't fly at great range, so I don't have any problems with Express LRS running down here inside the body. 
Uh, speaking of the body, I did lose a screw eventually through my flights. And if I sit it this way, you could probably see how the carbon fiber is separated from this. It's because this metal piece is bowed in and it's hitting on my camera lens on both sides. The camera lens, as you saw from the DVR, I did try to adjust that. We've got a breakage right there where it's kind of shifted. I guess actually it's shifted this way. Uh, so where the camera housing is broken. Um, I could probably take this apart and see if I could get it back into reinfo to refocus and then take the lock ring, which is the uh, threaded or the uh, the ring on there that has a little bit of a grip to it. See if I can get that to reset too after I get the camera set up that, you know, maybe it, it would be fine. Now, my suggestion is if you get one of these, prepare to put a metal standoff either here or here. And then use a longer screw than what the kit... Well, you do have long enough screws. Because there are plenty of longer screws that could go through here. But a metal standoff, they do not have. And I believe that is 10 millimeters. Let me get my calipers out. Yeah, this says 10. But but keep in mind, mine is bowed in a little bit. So, uh, and even if you had to put a metal nut on each end of your standoff to, to give yourself 12. You could get a 12. Let's measure it at the back. Because I don't think I damaged the back. Maybe that will give me a true measurement. This is going to be a pain in the backside, isn't it? Oh, I can go down this way. Hopefully I can get my calipers in here and I can get a decent measurement for everyone here. Oh, I think I'm going to be able to get it here. This, Yeah, that's about as good as I'm going to get that little... There we go. So 11. If you wanted to buy one that's 11, and I can't remember if they come in odd numbered measurements, 11 millimeters would be the size... Uh, to put, you know, here or here or both, and that would firm this housing up. Unfortunately, you know, we've seen metal in various iterations, and, you know, it might work in some scenarios, but, you know, when it's upright like this, eh, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not surprised by that damage. Uh, I am a little bit surprised as it was, in my opinion, a little bit of a glancing blow along the fence, but, you know, we had the audio, you can judge uh, how bad of a crash that was, but... That's definitely a weak spot because you've got a big bulk here. Uh, it is protected a little bit by the uh, arms and the motors out here. But if you hit something along here, which is what I think happened, I came along the fence and hit one of these sides. And then it shifted everything and then snapped my camera. You know, the quad still flies. Not a problem with that. I would have to put my, <laughs> my white wire back down on the board. But other than that, the quad would still fly. It just, you know, that's the damage. I guess I wanted to make sure I covered that. I've probably gone too deep on that uh, as far as the damage goes. I think their premise was that this carbon would hold it in place. And maybe if that screw hadn't come out, it would have. I can't say whether that screw was there before that flight or not. Uh, I took it out. Everything was kosher. I did two or three flights before that crash flight happened. I didn't end up using in this video. I was just kind of distracted and sloppy, just kind of getting my legs wet, probably just chilling out from work a little bit. Uh, so I can't say whether that was missing in one of the previous flights and I had some crashes or something. I, my crashes before that, to, it was just today, weren't that bad. They were like, I didn't hit the throttle quick enough or enough when I was making a hard at speed turn and I tumbled in the grass or something. I don't think that would cause that, but you never know. Uh, but anyways... It does come with extra screws. You can put screws back in there. But I think that was their premise is that this little piece of carbon would hold it from shifting where I think we need to have more of it out here at the leverage. That way our camera isn't out here on its own trying to hold the front end of the uh, body together. Again, I did get smart audio set up and that is my smart audio wire here. I soldered that to the bottom. But if you can see down in there, we don't have a smart audio connector or smart audio wire in that connector harness. We've only got the yellow, which is for video, and then we've got voltage and ground. Uh, so they actually took that pin out of the connector. Um, I don't know if they're doing that for all this model because they don't want you using smart audio because it doesn't work very well or something, or if that's something that Banggood or Ishin did for whatever reason, to remove that wire. So if you want to use Smart Audio like I did in my video, you have to wire it up. Uh, again, I'm using Smart Audio version, I think it's 2.1 or it's version 1. It's an older version uh, that I found would work as far as the VTX tables go. Me personally, I would have liked to have a little bit more pop, a little bit more KV in our motors. I have flown motors uh, about this size, up to 4,000 KV. I think going 33 or 3500 would have given it a little bit more punch, a little bit more fun. But 
also that would have shortened flight time it's just you know when you tend to fly at those higher kvs you tend to get less flight time uh, if you're comp comparing the same battery I think one of the other problems with the assembly is I think this board needs to be soft mounted a little bit more. It does come with gummies that you use, but it's so compact here in the body that you have to kind of screw it down with these standoffs. In my opinion, I had to screw it down further than I wanted, and I kept trying to unscrew it after I got it in the body. I kept trying to turn those with my needle nose to loosen those up because I really suspected, and I think I might be right. We'll see what other people say when they get theirs, that the, it just needs that isolation from the vibration and the rubber dampening that goes in there i just don't have much as you can see i'm trying to make it move i can barely make it move at all because it's so squished in there so that's a little bit unfortunate but one of the things i can get concerned about with all these builds especially a budget build is that someone who hasn't done a budget build is going to need to kind of know some of these little tips it's not necessarily about this goes screw goes here of course you want to make sure your motor screws that are mounting here, don't touch your motor windings up there. That's a bad one. That's uh, That happens a lot of times when we're new. If I were building this, I wouldn't bother to put these on. They do provide a little bit of end arm protection, but they didn't design them that way. They designed them like skids, but it's a bottom mounted battery. You're never going to skid on these things. So yeah, at the very least, you could probably shave it off. And it kind of was a pain to get these on and get them snug, but not pull them through this TPU because it is TPU, it's soft. So I think if you're building this, you can, they do have the right screws. You don't have to use these. I would just leave these off if I were you, unless you're planning to fly in a concrete jungle with lots, you know, a, a bando with lots of concrete that's gonna eat up your arm ends. Um, so you might wanna leave it if that's your flying space. Also about my CLI, I went uh, props in uh, just because well, generally speaking, I like props in, uh, be, probably because the way I fly. But uh, keep that in mind if you're using my CLI. Note how the motors are orientated on the arms. Uh, we have, uh, I can't remember, I think it's clockwise and counterclockwise screws. So you've got to line them up just this way so that then when the prop turns, the bolt actually turns against it. So that would work it to tighten. So it doesn't loosen on you. So you have to make sure you have your motors aligned just like I do. And then you go props out. See how the high pitch is leading the rotation. High pitch leads the rotation to create thrust. Props out is what we taught. We oftentimes call that. So for $129.99, is it worth a buy? Mm, I think so. If you're patient. And when I say if you're patient, I mean if you're really patient. Um... Because there, there are some things you're going to have to be patient with. Scrubbing all these motor wires. Keep in mind, each motor has three wires. So you're going to have to scrub them all to get that enamel off of there to get much of a, a bite on your solder so you can keep them to your flight controller. Um, if you're willing to you know, go out and get a 11 millimeter standoff to put between here and then use some longer screws, probably in your baggie. Um, if you're willing to maybe shave off some of the nylon nut here so that you can use that to create a little bit of additional uh, dampening for your, your your soft mounting on this flight controller so it can actually move a little bit. The stack is so compressed that that seems to be one of the only ways I can think of is to just maybe cut these down a little bit and then cut the threaded side down as well so you just have a little bit more space and you don't have to be so tight on there. So if you're willing to be patient and go through your build process, and when you're looking at the budget of $129, maybe it is worth it because costs of everything have gone up. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many quads we've had come to the channel where everybody's expecting them to be closer to $100, but now they're $150 or even more dollars. So that's why I think that if, if you're interested in a little bit of a frustrating build, this might be worth your time. By the way, if you're here all the way at the end, the T-Motor Feather 120, uh, it burned up when I plugged in a 2S battery. So as far as this being 2S compatible, I am in contact with T-Motor. I did let them know. Uh, they were very surprised, uh, but we'll see what comes of that because I wanted to try it on by blades. I couldn't get the blades down very far though. They're real tight on those motors. But I wanted to provide that little update. If I should do a separate video so more people know, let me know about the T-Motor Feather and 2S because the flight controller said 2S, 1 and 2S. But as far as the Ishin Tyro 79 Pro or V2 or 2022 edition, 
that is my experience. That is my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe got a little bit of entertainment uh, or just a bit a little a little bit of relaxation time. If you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know. Where at? Oh yeah, down there in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.